All right, here we go. Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to tell you exactly how to do church on Sunday. You what, need to listen to us. How many songs you need to yeah, do. We have the answers. The order of the service. Yeah, that's right. How long the sermon should be. Hint, it's under 20 minutes. No that's one wants right. to listen to you for longer than that. Mm, mm, and yeah, uh, and how many times you should do communion this is gonna in that nice day. Yep, Hint, yep. it's 12 yep. after the 12 disciples. <laughs> Well, you have to do communion 12 times every time you go to church. For more information about our esoteric teachings, um, <laughs> you can go to... I, we're the only ones laughing. Yeah, I know. This is stupid. <laughs> All right. That's not what we're talking about today. We're... No! We want to talk about this this topic of church. Ooh, right, the and, the and uh, when we meet together to worship, meet, meet, and against everything I just said, we're not here to tell you how to run mm-hmm. Sunday. In fact, if if that was, that is, I think the antithesis of what this podcast is, because really, we started this podcast desiring mm. that people who are listening to it Ooh. listen to it, forget what we said. <laughs> and instead, go to the scripture and go to their church. Yeah, and start yeah. start getting in it full bore. Yeah, and if Living Shema, the yeah. brand, mm. uh, never escapes their lips, <laughs> but the but the uh, the lifestyle, ooh, yeah, then then cool, up. then then yeah. we're good. Yeah, and Can I just uh, end on that. I just one of the things I love about what you're saying is it's like there are times when I start like I've started throw. I have the habit of starting theological books that people give to me. And the good ones, um, as I'm reading it, I'll get a few chapters in, and then I never finish them. Right. Because as I'm reading it, I'm so compelled and inspired by what they're talking about. I just like I gotta get in my Bible, or I gotta get, st- I gotta pray more, yeah. right? Or I gotta yeah. do- like I never even finish it, and maybe I'll come back and start reading it again. You know. So yeah, like that's Dude, how we want this podcast to be. That's yeah. hilarious. I um, I'm sure that we're not the only people that do that, but I like have a bookshelf of books that are that I'm a third of the way through. <laughs> that's right. And I'm that's serious. the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I just like yeah. I'm reading, I'm just like, man, this is good. Like I gotta yeah. read. We don't want no LS again or whatever. We don't want to like living Shema. That's why we should never have T shirts. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my gi for sure. My jujitsu gi. I'm definitely gonna get it, mostly because it's a triangle. Yeah, just get a patch. That. Just get yeah. the because I mean, yeah. we we spent money making our logo. Okay, no, guys, no, like it's did. <laughs> at least got to be on my gi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta put something. I'll put on a hat or whatever. <laughs> oh, just because I'm. I just think it looks slick. But anyway, it does. It's fresh. <laughs> Here's the point. Here's the point. Yeah. Um, we want to talk about uh, mm. church is sometimes talked about because that's what you do on Sunday. That's what you do Sunday until 12 or 12.30 if you're super spiritual, and then you (laughs) wait a week until you do church again, until you go back to church. Yeah, yeah. And Maybe you do it Saturday night. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. Wednesday Bible study? So maybe church church is a weekend thing, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not just this... Just this uh, a, a gathering that happens, um, but it's permeated throughout the week. And what does that actually? Mm. What does mm. that actually mean? Mm. And what does that actually look like practically? Mm. What does that look like radically? I mm. think that um, I think that what I'm saying right now is not new, but typically what that means is like that means that after church, like you you read your bible a lot or or you have a phone call with a friend in the evening hmm. you know or you go to or you go to that bible study that's on Wednesday or you go to that youth group that's on Thursday and uh you now we're talking about what did the what did the church look like yeah. in the first century yeah. and what did it actually mean to to yeah. be the church and to yeah. worship together yeah. on a day-to-day basis and one um, note like yeah. one of the things I'm trying to change church with is gathering, like yeah. meeting. Because I tell you what, and you and I come from the Plymouth Brethren background, calling it an assembly for a reason. For that reason, I'm getting it now, because one of the things that is lost is the meaning of church. But you know, an example, like I know some people, especially post COVID, are meeting virtually and stuff like that. But that's not a gathering. And one of the reasons I really feel 
that's important I'm noticing especially is that I long to do this in person with you. Even though I'm still edified, built up, that is, encouraged when we meet, there's something about being in the same space, sharing the same breath, even spirit, right, which that word translates similarly within the Greek and the Hebrew. But there's something that God does when we're in each other's presence that just can't be explained. At the end of Romans, last chapter, I think it's 16. Mm. Is that that's okay. Romans have Back 16 chapters? That's, that's good homework. Yeah. 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 E- even at the end of Romans, uh, mm. he's talking about all the different places it's going to go to. Mm. And I, I would imagine Paul knows like this this is going to this is gonna really impact some people. Maybe he didn't mm. know to what extent, maybe he didn't know that I'd be talking about it two thousand years later. But yeah, I'm writing this and I'm give I'm I'm having uh, the sister in Christ disperse it throughout the things. And even though he knows that what he's writing is gonna just make waves throughout the Christian community, he still says at the end that he longs to be. Yeah. with with the people of, yeah. of Rome. And it's not because what he's doing virtually, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, the letter that was, I'm just <laughs> using that modern word. But it's not that he doesn't think that, that that's going to have an impact. He probably really truly knows that it's going to because it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. But he still longs to be with the people. And what he says in, in that last chapter is that he longs to be in their presence and be refreshed. Actually, I think that's the, yeah. that's the, pen, the penultimate yeah. ultimate chapter. But yeah. he says that when he's with them, that he's going he he's excited to be refreshed. Yeah, Mutual and he's vision. not being refreshed by just sending them the letter. And, yeah. and you know, there's a certain level of that that you and I are doing where I'm I'm refreshed after this. But man, when I get to be yeah. with you, which I don't yeah. know if it'll be before June, but we'll definitely see each other in June and mm. and uh, be able to talk and embrace yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking forward to being refreshed. Yeah. Uh, That's why John's letters are so short. He's like, yep. uh, I'm, the rest I'm going to tell you face to face. Yeah, yeah. I'm tell you face to face. <laughs> it's like, all right, John, for sure. Uh, I wish I could be there. Anyways, let's talk about the importance of gathering together. Like, what's the point? Today, we're going to be focusing on, on our relationships one with another. We're not going to be talking about preaching or the establishment of the order of service, how we arrange things when people gather on the first day of the week. But we're going to talk about the significance of the rest of the days, right? Yeah. Okay, so little disclaimer here, Romans 14, 5, just so we understand. We do understand there's some people who are like Sunday, just like the Jews were like Saturday, right? Yeah. And we're yeah. not going to try to start a debate. All we want to remind people of is Scripture says, Romans 14, 5, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So, please remain kind. All right. So, there you go. We got that out the way. Now yep. it's time to judge. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> ridiculous. We fulfilled our legal obligations. <laughs> now you can draw your own conclusions. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. All right. So, a good setup here is the, like, what's at risk if we do not take every opportunity we can to exhort one another. I think mm. Colossians 3.16 talks about letting the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and our wisdom, uh, teaching and admonishing one another. And we use songs and hymns and spiritual songs to do that. Um, but uh, the importance, I think, we really downplay. And uh, one of the scripture passages we want to launch from would be Hebrews chapter 3. Mm-hmm. Starting at verse... 12 and 13. They can read the rest on their own. But it says here, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, Mm. lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Mm -hmm. (gasps) But for real though, Shouldn't we be concerned, Ben? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I love, I love how this is worded. Mm. I don't know. I'm careful, to, but it's kind of snarky. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sarcastic. But it's like, hey, exhort, exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today. You know, it's like is when when should I exhort my fellow? But Mr. Well, ben, Mr. Ben. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, it's today, today. <laughs> 
like that do what about it yesterday oh what about tomorrow yeah 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 <laughs> um but it's it's so it's so painfully yeah. um mm. obvious what he's yeah what he is telling us to do is that this is a day this is a daily thing yeah um yeah. and that if we are if we are failing to do that or just waiting for the program times in our life Ooh. we got wednesday night bible study mm-hmm. we got sunday uh service we got saturday night that's when we get together and encourage one another great mm. um but if we're not in in a constant state of lifting one another up being the body mm. being the heart that's that's pumping the blood Ooh. and the lungs that are that are that that's getting that that throughout the bloodstream and the hands that are bringing the food up to eat and all you know all this kind of stuff we're not being the body of christ and moving one another you know we're the hands and feet of jesus there's not a mm. verse that that says that, but you know, it says with different parts of the body. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, where the hands and yeah. feet of Jesus, and and hands and feet do things. Yes, and yeah. so we gotta we gotta do things. Yeah, yeah. I mean that like it, it doesn't just mean you gotta then you you're part of the prayer team. You know, it's like ev- every day. Yeah. The the call of Scripture, as long as that day is called today. Yeah. We need to be doing things, yeah. um, taking action, and exhorting, and yeah. admonishing, and teaching, and encouraging, and lifting each other up. Mm. I mean, that's church, man. That's yeah. like that's, that's a right. that's a beautiful thing. That's why we gather together. And Paul was in need of that too. He wasn't exempt from that. And that's why earlier, what you were saying, the idea of this mutual faith, this mutual encouraging that's taking place. Paul actually talked about Anisophorus. Right in Second Timothy, who refreshed him when he was kind of like on his own. Unisiphorus actually goes to find him mm. and encourage him when no one else was there to support this brother. And this mm. is like that guy wasn't referenced as being some profound theologian or great uh, prayer warrior. Whatever. The guy just was hospitable and wanted to make sure that Paul was doing well. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Reminding yeah. him of the simple truth and showing and demonstrating the love of the Lord Jesus. Man, speaking of the, mm. I mean, it's a good study to just go to every one of mm. Paul's epistles at least and just mm-hmm. hit the last chapter, which is the one that everyone skips over, <laughs> sure. and just read the the yeah. sheer amount of names. That's right. The shout outs. Oh, the shout outs. But I mean, it is uh, even when yeah. Paul was in prison. Yeah. He's got a list yeah. of names of people yeah. that came and were with him. That's right. And yeah. Paul's not some super Christian that could do no. it all on his own. No, he's and not. he knew that more than anyone else. That's right. Expect um, Second Timothy is he talks about come to me, yeah. come to me as soon as you can. He knew yeah. he was at the end, man. There was even someone yeah. that I can't remember who who it was exactly. I think it is at the end of Romans because I remember reading it recently, mm. and it was like I'm. I want to send this person to you, but I don't because of what a comfort they are. Like he's he said those <laughs> things too, but he's just like ah, I'm gonna miss them so much, you know, because yeah. like, ah, I love them and they're yeah. a good friend of mine, you know. But yeah. it's like having having that um, that it is it can't be understated. I'm sorry, it can't be overstated mm. how important it is to um, to be part of a church family yeah. and to be participating in the church family and to be. To be given into that and to be receiving from yes, it, yes, being surrounded God. by uh, by people who are exhorting you, encouraging you, and sometimes, I mean, just just there, just being your friend, you know, yeah, just being yeah. just That's being right. in your presence, That's right. uh, comforting yeah. you, refreshing you. Doesn't mean yeah. you have to have something g- terrible going on in your life or something mm. great going on, mm. um, but it's a, it's a it's this constant thing that is consistently keeping us from being hardened by the deceitfulness of Whoa, sin, right? And uh, and encouraging and lifting us up um, right, right. In, in our everyday walk. There's something to be said about confirming Christ in us every single day. We need. There's a lot of people, man, who are not walking in Christ. Yeah. You know, you prayed a prayer. You know, you read a few Bible verses, got into some Bible studies, maybe did some great things, but you've left off of your first love. And now's the time. Hey, now's the time to wake up. Check yourself yeah. before you wreck yourself type yeah. deal. And you need other people to help you with that. You yeah. can't do that on your own. And maybe if you're that, maybe you're going to church. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're going to a church on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And what that means is that you walk in, you sit down, you hear the word, you sing yep. some songs, and you walk out. 
and you never you never <laughs> interact with a single person. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you didn't go to church, you went to a TED Talk. Ooh, that's what that is. Dang. That's that's as good as listen to a podcast it. and think that you no. went to church. It's like no, it's the it's the gathering of people. It's being with one another. It's yeah. it's encouraging yeah. and exhorting. That's and right. all those all those other things are the tools that make church happen. But when church yes. is happening, is when people yes. are yes. Uh, with one another. We go from Hebrews three to Hebrews ten, yes. um, twenty four and twenty five. Let us consider how to stir up one another. Mm. I like that. Let mm. us. We should be thinking about how we can stir up one another. Let's mm. consider that. Let's yeah. not, like, it doesn't say, now go and stir one another up. It says, consider yes. how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, mm. yep. but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so there, mm. again, I love this, let us consider how to stir up one mm. another. Mm. We don't presume mm. to do this podcast and then just say, well, good, you know, go stir each other up. But really think about how you can do that. Mm, number one, it is so needed for us to come together, right? And not only just needed, like that's what we've been talking about, but it's a privilege. All right, so just think about this one. I want people to just, uh, my challenge is look at how Paul is conflicted in Philippians in the first chapter. The conflict that Paul is having, which I think is so great, is that he can't figure out whether it's better for him to die and to receive Mm, like the finish line, mm -hmm. like, yeah, all right, you did it, baby, and the game. So he doesn't know if he can cash out or and be with Christ or to stay alive and to continue to serve and to equip other believers unto joy exceeding. So do we have that? I hear so many Christians, and I used to talk this way, but actually I'm starting to feel this way, and that is, do we find ourselves so in love with what God has us doing? Do I see ourselves so essential to the plan of God in the growth and joy of other people that we're not sure if we're ready to go to heaven yet? Mm. Not like I want to see my grandkids grow up or for the young people. I want to get married and have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't right. come yet, Lord. To, that's right. I used to say stupid stuff like that. Yeah, like everyone, everyone did. All Everyone's right. given that right. pass. That's fine. <laughs> that's, don't, right. Right. that's right. Don't that's don't right. shame a brother right. for. All right. You're right. Yeah, my bad, young <laughs> homie. My bad, young lady. But uh, there's better things. All right. So, but there, I'm telling you, brother. Like, like now, I finally am starting to understand what our brother Paul was talking about. And so when we like. We have the young men's meeting Friday and Saturday. And now we got a young ladies meeting on Saturday as well with my wife and some other women. And it's taking place at homes. And so when you look at Acts 2, 42 through 46, you see the early church of Jerusalem that blossoms. And these people are devoting themselves daily to meeting at one accord that they're all just eager to be together. Definitely on Sunday. No doubt. There's a precedent for that. We see that. Yeah, for sure. But it says daily. They were there. And also breaking bread from house to house. So these people are massing together in the temple courts, worshiping the Lord, exhorting, encouraging one another. You're getting some preaching, no doubt. But then house to house, they get together eating and they're sharing and they're in each other's business, bro. Like they know what's going on in each other's lives. Like sin is being revealed and dealt with by God's word and through prayer. And the world is seeing this. They have favor with people who are not saved. Mm -hmm. And brother, I'm seeing that right now in our lives. There are people that we have favor with in the city of Kalamazoo who are not believers, but they're like, yo, you are so positive. You are so kind. You're so loving. Hey, man, that would have upset me if somebody did that to me. And we have opportunity after opportunity to naturally progress into a gospel-centered conversation where we share the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But my brother, people need to understand that the gathering is about people being in your business and you being in their business in the business is our fathers. Mm. It's the business of his kingdom. And we're eagerly pursuing it because there's nothing better. And we urge each other to continue when it's hard. And so this is my encouragement. This is our encouragement, is that if you are not stuck between two opinions, whether it's better to die and to be with the Lord in heaven, or whether it's better to stay and to just abound in joy and be the cause by God's grace of the joy of your brothers and sisters in your church, in your local gathering, then 
I want to challenge you. You got some digging to do about what it is to follow Jesus. Because he said in John 15 that if we follow his commandments in loving God and loving one another as he loved us, then our joy will be full. And so that's what we want people to know. Yeah. Live what you hear in God's word, and there's nothing better. Yeah. And if we get into that mindset, mm-hmm. um, Sunday isn't good enough. Oh, <laughs> you said it, bro. Dang, that's it right there. Sunday isn't good enough. Mm-hmm. I need more. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Man, that, that tastes good right there. <laughs> Living Shema is produced by Benjamin Foote and Carl Wellborn Jr. Our intro and outro music was produced by Jason Vaughn. If you have a question, comment, or quip, please contact us via email at livingshemaofficial at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time.